because I know that my story starts here with my mom and dad. I like to say that this is where the magic didn't happen. <laughs> Look at these two. <laughs> they were never gonna make it. Uh, when word got out that they were dating, people lost their minds. I'm not saying that it was front page news, but I believe that it made the walls of certain bathroom stalls in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. It's where they lived and met and fell in love at the time. Here's the rub. My mother is Amhada. Amhada is the most elite tribe in Ethiopia because it can trace a bloodline back to Queen of Sheba. I say that like I understand the significance, but I don't. <laughs> Just know that they're the best. Uh, my father is Eritrean. Eritreans are very upset with Ethiopians because Ethiopia didn't show African solidarity when Italy came to colonize Eritrea. It would have been one thing if, you know, Ethiopia stayed out of their business completely, but they actually supported Italy's presence in exchange for a few perks. Things like guns and ammunition, financial aid. So, uh, yeah, Italy occupies Eritrea from 1880 to 1947, and when Italy packs up and goes back to Europe, Ethiopia comes back like some jilted ex-lover and says, you know that was just a fling, right? <laughs> Didn't mean anything. We have always been soulmates. What do you say we pick up where we left off? <laughs> to which Eritrea said, go home, Ethiopia. You're drunk. <laughs> this wasn't good news for Ethiopia. They really wanted Eritrea back. Eritrea has an eastern coast along the Red Sea, and without those 250 miles, they're landlocked. So Ethiopia tries again, maybe this time a little bit more desperately, and says, it was just a minor indiscretion. It didn't mean anything. I can't be perfect 100% of the time. I mean, did you see the leg on Italy? <laughs> Eritrea didn't care. They were determined to be independent, and if it meant that they would engage in more conflict, so be it. And that's it. That is the source of conflict for those two, and that is the bad blood that forbid them from being together. The only person neutral on the subject was my mother's father. Dad says that this man was ahead of his time as a thinker. I said, Pop, did he believe that the world was round? No! We lived in mud huts with thatched roofs at the time, Nardos. No one believed that. Your grandfather was wise because he believed that arguing over tribal differences was a waste of time and effort. He said, who cares what people think? Just be happy instead. They won't be around when you need them the most. So they fell in love and they got married. It was perfect for both of them. My mother was one of nine children in a crowded house. She saw a perfect opportunity to do something for herself here. And at the age of 18, you know, her looks were soon to fade, so <laughs> it was the right next move. <laughs>